Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Tony Sport Newsfeed. Today I will talk about uh, the drivetrain and especially how important it is to have a super free and smooth working drivetrain when you are running stock classes. So we will talk about a little bit um, kind of um, the bearings, the drive belts and um, in the end of the video I will give you just a quick feedback about the Protoform P63 body shell which I promised you in the last video clip. Um, I have done some testing now and I just will talk a little bit about the body shell as well. But first of all, we will talk about the bearings and the drive belts and what you can do to get the best possible and most free working drivetrain for your touring car, especially for 21.5, 17.5 and 13.5 stock racing. I would say let's go directly into the video and I hope that you will enjoy it. So now we are here on my workbench in my hobby room and um, yeah, let's um, talk a little bit about the drivetrain, the bearings and the drive belts. Um, first of all, it is important to, to say that the drivetrain is important no matter what class you are racing. But um, my point of view is that it's a huge benefit if you have um, a free and smooth working drivetrain, especially when you are running in stock classes. It is easy to explain. Imagine you have a modified motor in your car and the motor has so much power. In most of the cases, the modified guys, they don't use the full power of the motor because um, yeah, the car will be very close to an airplane then. And um, so the drivetrain is not the problem when it comes to accelerating and braking and rolling because um, the car is always fast and has a lot of power available. But when we are running in stock classes, in the slower stock classes, especially 17.5, 21.5, where the motor power is pretty limited and in some racing series you also have an, an RPM limiter and a limit in the gearing. So then um, it is a huge benefit when your drivetrain is completely free and super smooth. Because in this case you will not generate more top speed because the top speed is limited by the gear ratio and the, the RPM limiter. But when the drivetrain has the lowest amount of resistance, you have more punch out of the corners. You can accelerate faster to the yeah, limited top speed then and you will have a benefit in, in this uh, area of, of, of driving. Um, and as well, one of the most important things in stock racing is the corner speed, which your car carries through the whole corner. And when your car is rolling without a lot of resistance, it is more easy for the car to pick up a lot of corner speed and to not slow down too much in the corners, especially in the apex of the corner where you use the most of your steering lock. So caring about the drivetrain is super important. And um, yeah, first of all, it is important that you clean, that you have good um, and cleaned and oiled uh, bearings in good conditions. Therefore, you can um, yeah, use different kinds of bearings. Um, just a quick update, uh, you can buy bearings with steel caps on both sides, with steel uh, seals. Um, you can buy rubber sealed bearings, which the rubber shield has uh, the job to, to prevent the, the, the bearings from getting dirty due to dust and uh, dirt. And there are also um, available um, ceramic uh, bearings, which are normally very expensive. So um, first of all, I want to, to kick out uh, the ceramic bearings uh, a little bit because I have never owned some uh, ceramic bearings in my life. Um, I don't know if they are worth the money. The price is normally very high and you can expect those bearings to work very smooth, very free and very, very good. But yeah, it's, it's a price point. Um, my recommendation is uh, get your hands on a set of bearings. It is your decision if you want them to be rubber sealed or only steel sealed. Um, in my opinion, it is uh, always good when the bearings have a steel um, housing or steel um, cap um, on both sides or at least on one side, uh, because then you can open these bearings and clean them properly. Um, opening these bearings is something you have to get used to a little bit. Um, just use a Sharpie or something which is very thin and, and um, you can uh, yeah, use to, to open the, the, the large C-clip on the outside of the, of the cover from the bearing. And once you have um, practiced that uh, several times on maybe an old bearing, then you can start to open your good bearings from your race car and to clean them with brake cleaner, especially when they are new um, a lot of bearings, they are full of bearing fat, they are of grease. So um, they are not running super free and super smooth, but they are full of grease. And uh, you can remove the grease by using um, a bearing cleaner. Just um, this, for example, from MR33. Just uh, put your 
bearings here into this uh, cage and then place it into the bearing cleaner, make it half full with the brake cleaner, close it and then you can um, uh, clean out all the grease or the oil from the bearings. After that you will feel that the bearing is much uh, more free. It will spin a lot faster and free but it needs one drop of oil for sure before you reinstall it into the car. Um, a lot of oils on the market are really good. I always use a very thin oil from MR33 or from Runup Run -up Racing um, and with a, a very thin oil your bearing will always run super free and super smooth um, but you need at least one drop of oil to get the bearing running in a good condition. After that you can, can uh, close uh, the bearings again with a C-clip and then you can reinstall them in the car and you will immediately feel that, um, that uh, the drivetrain feels even more free with a super fresh cleaned bearing. And um, another aspect is sometimes you, you take a bearing in your hands and you, you spin it on your finger or you just try to, to feel if everything is okay and the bearing feels pretty fine. But when you then open and clean it, you can be very um, excited about the amount of dirt which is coming out of the bearing. And I think um, no particular part of dirt which is inside of a bearing is a benefit. So make yourself uh, your, own, uh, your own view and try it and then you will see that it's uh, worth the time to, to care about the bearings in your car. Another aspect are the drive belts. In this car you can see I use uh, the white uh, low friction drive belts from MR33. They are made from Bando, one of the most uh, famous companies in making drive belts for our cars. And um, these white low friction belts, they are a little bit softer and they um, yeah, are freeing up the drivetrain a lot, especially for the stock classes. Highly recommended to use these drive belts for modified not. They are maybe a little bit too soft and they will wear, wear out uh, too fast when you use them in modified. But in the stock classes it is important to use them. And another important um, tip from my side is uh, the belt tension. Always try to use only the belt tension which you need to get the car running without um, the belts uh, skipping under accelerating and braking. Um, but your focus should be on using the less possible belt tension which is, uh, yeah, which is possible. So make them as, as, um, as low as possible and um, you will get even more freeness in your drivetrain. You can see here for example I can easily push the belt down to the top deck without using any kind of force in front and rear. Um, and this is only possible for 17.5 or 13.5 racing. Um, for modified you must go uh, to a harder belt tension. But this is also something which helps a lot to free up your drivetrain. So belt tension and smooth low friction belts are one of my uh, yeah, continuing tips for a perfect drivetrain in the stock racing class. Okay. Um, that's it uh, about the drivetrain. Um, I mean all these tips they are not totally new and I think most of the RC racers uh, who are taking it a little bit more serious they are doing this since many many years but if you are new in the hobby and if it's the first time you just try to get into that racing um, don't care too much about it but always make sure that your drivetrain is not uh, blocked or um, if a bearing sounds pretty scary and pretty damaged just replace it because the drivetrain is super important. Okay, now I uh, just want to talk quickly about uh, the new Protoform body shell, the P63, which um, uh, I got uh, one week ago. You saw it in my last video clip, unpainted, but now I had the chance to test it on the track. Um, I was practicing in 17.5 stock and um, compared the body shell with the Wolverine from Zoo Racing, which I used at the last ETS race in Germany. And um, I can tell you that both body shells had almost the same pace. I had a faster run with the Protoform, but it was... 0.3 seconds faster than with the Wolverine but the feeling on track was different. The Wolverine felt a little bit more aggressive and sharp while the Protoform body shell felt a little bit more smooth and maybe a little bit less aggressive and easier to drive but in the end the pace, the performance overall was almost very identical so if you are looking for a body shell which feels a little bit smoother on track give the Protoform P63 a try. It, um, it's a very nice body shell and quality is good and um, yeah, we can be happy to have one more body shell uh, in contention now with uh, the Twister and the Wolverine from Zoo Racing. So that's pretty fine. Yeah, this uh, was um, the little capture here from, from my bench. And now we are going back to the studio.
So guys, that was our video for today. Um, I hope you liked uh, watching it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Um, yeah, I think it is very easy to understand that a free working drivetrain is the key to success in stock touring car classes concerning acceleration, corner speed and a maximum yeah, power and punch out of your package of your battery and stock motor. And um, this can help you a lot to get even better results. And last but not least, in my opinion, the Protoform P63 also a very good body shell to go uh, testing with or racing with. Um, Protoform seems to be back in the market now, so get a P63 as well and go out on the racetrack. Um, yeah, that was our video for today. I hope that you liked it. And uh, if you have not uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel until now, just do it. Make sure that the bell is on. You will never miss any content in the future. And um, yeah, I just can tell you that I'm just working on the next video concerning stock racing and that will be up here on the channel in a couple of weeks latest and uh, until then I hope that you will enjoy RC racing in the best way and always keep in mind race with Tony Sport you will never race alone and we see us in the next video thanks for watching and goodbye